in question number 31 it is given that a potentiometer having a wire of length 4 meter is connected to the terminals of a battery with a steady voltage a cell has a null point at 1 meter from one end so this distance is 1 meter now if the length of potentiometer wire is increased by 1 meter that means the new length of potentiometer wire will be 5 meter then we want to find the position of null point let's say position of null point is x here as the emf of the cell remains constant the ratio of balancing point to the total length will be constant so we can write l1 by total length initially that was 4 is equals to x divided by new total length will be 5 meter here l1 is given as 1 meter so 1 by 4 is equals to x by 5 so x will be equal to 5 by 4 that is 1.25 meter so option 2 is correct option in question number 32 a wire of length 4 meter and cross-sectional area 1 mm square is carrying a, carrying a current of 2 ampere each cubic meter of the material contains 10 power 29 free electrons that means the charge density is 10 power 29 electrons per meter cube we want to find the average time taken by the electron to cross the length of wire here simply time can be written as length upon velocity here electrons will move with average velocity that is drift velocity the current is equals to n e v d e so drift velocity can be written as i divided by n e a put this value in this equation so t is equals to l divided by i n e e put the value l is 4 meter n is 10 power 29 e is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 area is 1 mm square that is 10 power minus 6 meter square and current is 2 ampere simplify this we will get t is equals to 3.2 into 10 power 4 second so option 3 is correct option in question number 33 the combination of resistors each of having resistance 2 ohm is given we want to find the equivalent resistance between A and I. Here, if we connect a cell or battery between A and I, the current will flow from this point. Now, at this point, it will divide into two parts. At this point B, it will again divide into two parts. But the current will be same as the resistance of each resistor is same. So the current coming from here will move directly from this branch, branch CD. So current through this resistor is 0 and current through this resistor is also 0. So this too can be neglected same way. Current passing through this will move from this, let's say this point is O. So current coming from B point in BO branch will flow in OD branch. So there is no current distribution at this junction. So using symmetricity concept, we can remove this junction and this to resistance. So the new circuit will look like this is point O, this is point B, this is point C, it is D, and the lower one will be. This is point A, or we can say G. This is F, and this is common connection I. Now we can clearly see this is a Wheatstone bridge. The ratio is same. Two by two is equals to two by two. So no current will flow from this resistor so we can neglect it 
the equivalent of this upper half will be equal to 2 ohm same way equivalent of this lower half will also be 2 ohm so the circuit will look like the upper 2 ohm and lower 2 ohm are in parallel so the equivalent between a and i is equals to 1 ohm so option 2 is correct option in question number 34 a wire is bent into form a circle having resistance 1 ohm per meter the equivalent resistance between m and n is 1.8 ohm we want to find the length of this shorter section here the whole circular wire is divided into two sections and these two are connected in parallel the current at point m will divide into two parts at point n they'll combine again let's see the resistance of shorter length is r so the resistance of this will be 20 minus r as the total resistance given of the wire is 20 ohm these two are connected in parallel and their equivalent is 1.8 ohm so r m n can be given as r into 20 minus r divided by 20 and that is equals to 1.8 if we simplify this for the value of r 20 r minus r square is equals to 36 so r square minus 20 r minus 36 is equals to 0 to find the value of r r is equals to 20 plus or minus under root 400 plus 1 4 4 minus b plus or minus under root b square minus 4 ac divided by twice e so the value of r will be 18 ohm and 2 ohm as this part has shorter length its value will be 2 ohm and this will be 18 ohm we want to find the length of this part the wire is having resistance per unit meter as 1 ohm per unit meter if the resistance of this part is 2 ohm then its length will be 2 meter so option 1 is correct option in question number 35 the four terminals of the network is given points a b and c are at the same potential so we can connect them as a b and c are at same potential the potential difference between any of c d b d or a d is 40 volt we want to find the potential difference between a and o so here it is given that VAD is equals to 40 volt. We want to find potential difference between A and O that is VAO. Here the R equivalent of the surf circuit can be given as as B, C and A are at same potential. These three are in parallel and in series with resistance R. The equivalent of this three parallel will be r by 3 in series with r so plus r so r effective will be 4 r by 3 the current coming from b c and a branch are combined at this point o and the total current flows through the branch o d we can write i r effective is equals to 40 volt but r effective is 4 r by 3 is equals to 40 volt so i r is equals to 30 volt so the total current flowing from this will be 30 by r ampere at the point o as these three resistances are in parallel and they are having equal magnitude the current will be divided into three equal parts so current 
through OA branch is I by 3 that is equals to 10 by R. So the potential difference across OA is equals to current into resistance current is 10 by R into resistance R that is equals to 10 volt. So option 1 is correct option. In question number 36 cells A and B they are having EMF 10 volt and internal resistance 5 ohm and 3 ohm respectively they are connected in series with the resistance R. We want to find the value of R such that the potential difference across the cell A is 0. Let's say this point is P and this point is Q. So it is given that VP minus VQ is equals to 0. Let's say current I is flowing through the circuit in this direction. So across P and Q writing the KVL equation VP current will be flowing in this direction. We are moving from positive to negative terminal that means from high potential to low potential of a battery. So we are losing potential by 10 volt. Current is flowing in this direction. So this is high potential point and this is low potential point. We are moving from P to Q. So we are moving from low potential to high potential. So we are gaining the potential by 5i. So it is 5i is equals to VQ. So VP minus VQ is equals to 5i. 10 minus 5i. But VP minus VQ is equals to 0. Is equals to 10 minus 5i. So we can write 2 is equals to R. But the total current in the circuit is given by net EMF that will be 20 divided by effective resistance. Effective resistance will be R plus 8 as these three resistances are in series. So R plus 8 is equals to 10. So R is equals to 2 ohm. Option 3 is correct option. In question number 37, in the circuit, the galvanometer shows zero deflection. The batteries A and B have negligible internal resistance. We want to find the value of R. Here current through this branch is zero. We want to find the resistance R and the internal resistance of the batteries is also zero. Let's say current flowing through the circuit is I. At point E, the current through the galvanometer is zero. So same current will flow through resistance R. Now writing KVL equation for loop A, B, C, D. First we are considering the outer loop. Starting from this point, we are moving from low to high potential. That means we are gaining potential of 12 volt. At this point, we are moving from high to low potential. So we are losing potential by 1000 I. At this battery, we are moving from high potential to low potential. So we are losing potential by 2 volt is equals to 0. So 10 is equals to 1000 I. From this we can write I is equals to 1 by 100 ampere. Now same way writing equation for loop A E F D. Again we will start from this point. We are moving from low potential to high potential. So we will gain potential by 12 volt. From the 1000 ohm resistance we are moving from high potential to low potential so we are losing potential by 1000 I and I is 1 by 100. From the resistance also we are moving from high potential to low potential so we will lose the potential by R into I and I is 1 by 100 is equals to 0. So 12 minus 10 minus R by 100 is equals to 0. So R by 100 is equals to 2. So R is equals to 200 ohm. So option 2 
is correct option. In question number 38, two batteries each of EMF E and internal resistance small r are connected to an external resistance r in two ways, one in series and one in parallel. Current in both the cases is equal, let's say current as I through the resistor R. We want to find the internal resistance small r. Writing current in this equation, the net EMF will be 2E, I is V by R. Net EMF will be 2E divided by net resistance will be 2R plus capital R. Current in this case, as both are connected in parallel, net EMF will be E. The equivalent of the internal resistance of batteries will be R by 2. As batteries are connected in parallel, resistances are also in parallel. And this R by 2 is in series with capital R. So I will be 2E divided by R plus 2R. This both currents are same. So we can write 2E divided by 2R plus R is equals to 2E divided by R plus 2R. So we can write 2R plus capital R is equals to R plus 2R. So R is equals to small r. So option 3 is correct option. In question number 39, it is given that 6 identical cells, let's say of EMF E, and in negligible internal resistance are connected in series in a secondary circuit of a potentiometer. At that time, the balancing length is L. If 6 cells are connected in series, then the net EMF will be 6E and for that balancing length given is L. Now, balancing length is L by 3 when the sum of the cells are connected wrongly. Let's say at that time, the EMF, net EMF is capital E. We want to find the number of cells connected wrongly. In this case, we can write EMF is directly proportional to resistance of the potentiometer wire and resistance is directly proportional to length. So we can directly say E is directly proportional to L. For 6E EMF, the balancing length is L. And for capital E, the balancing length is L by 3. So 6E by capital E is equals to 3. So E is equals to 2E. That means in the second case, the net EMF will be 2E instead of 6E. If we arrange the cells, In this manner, this 4 are connected in same manner, so their equivalent will be 4E. And this 2 are connected in opposite side, their equivalent will be minus 2E. So equivalent will become 2E. So 2 cells are connected wrongly. Option 3 is correct option. In question number 40, 2 electric bulbs marked as 500 watt and 220 volt are connected in series they both will have same resistance they are identical they are connected in series with the supply 110 volt line we want to find the power dissipated in each of the bulb as both are identical the power dissipated will be same and potential difference across both of them will be same so potential difference across this will be 110 by 2 that is 55 and same for this case. Power dissipated can be given as V square by R. So 55 square divided by resistance. First we have to find the resistance for that rating of the bulb is given. We can write P rated is equals to V rated square divided by resistance. So R will be V rated is 220 whole square divided by power rated as 500 so power dissipated will be 55 square divided by r is 220 square into 500 so power dissipated will be simplify this value will get answer 125 by 4 watt so option 1 is correct option in question number 41 it is given that 
a fuse wire with radius of 0.2 mm blows off with a current of 5 ampere so r1 is equals to 0.2 mm and its current capacity i1 is 5 ampere now the fuse wire of same material but radius 0.3 mm is used then what will be its current capacity here for the fuse wire we know that heat energy dissipated is i square rt and heat energy radiated can be given as 2 pi r l h t here h is the heat lost by radiation per unit area per unit time here length h t is constant because material is constant so we can write i square is directly proportional to radius and inversely proportional to resistance but resistance is inversely proportional to area so it is inversely proportional to radius square so we can write i square is directly proportional to r cube so i2 by i1 is equals to r2 by r1 whole power 3 by 2 so i2 by i1 is equals to r2 is 0 0.3 mm so 3 by 2 whole power 3 by 2 i2 by i1 will be equal to 27 by 8 power 1 by 2 so i2 will be i1 is 5 ampere under root 27 by 8 ampere so option 3 is correct option in question number 42 in the determination of the internal resistance of a cell using potentiometer when cell is shunted by resistance r and connected in the secondary circuit the balancing length is found to be l1 on doubling the shunt resistance that means the resistance will be 2r the balancing length is found to be l2 we want to find the value of internal resistance r here for potentiometer we can see v1 by v2 is equals to l1 by l2 so v1 is the potential difference across resistance r it can be written as e r1 upon r1 plus r and potential difference across resistance in case 2 can be written as 2 e r upon 2r plus r is equals to l1 by l2 simplify this this er and er will get cancelled out so we can write 2r plus r divided by 2 into r plus r is equals to l1 by l2 we want to find the internal resistance small r so 2r plus r into l2 is equals to 2l1 into r plus r solve this equation for the value of small r we will get small r is equals to 2r bracket l2 minus l1 divided by 2l1 minus l2 so option 2 is correct option in question number 43 a circuit is given of potentiometer to compare two resistances the balance point with a standard resistance let's say r is 10 ohm the balancing length is found to be 58.3 centimeter when this resistance is replaced with unknown resistance x the balancing length is 68.5 centimeter we want to find the value of x here we can write e1 in the first case when r is connected is equals to i r and for the second case current will remain same so i into x so e1 by e2 is equals to r by x but e1 by e2 is equals to l1 by l2 so x will be r l2 by l1 
here R is 10, L2 is 68.5 and L1 is 58.3 centimeter. So X will be 11.75 ohm. So option 1 is correct option. In question number 44, the length of potentiometer wire is 100 centimeter and EMF of the standard cell given is E volts. It is used to measure the EMF of a battery whose internal resistance is 0.5 ohm. The balance point obtained is 30 centimeter from one end, from the positive end. This is positive end, so balancing length is 30 centimeter from this end. We want to find the EMF of battery. Here simply we can write let's say EMF of battery is V1. So V1 by E is equals to L1 divided by total length L. So V1 will be L1 is 30 divided by 100 into E. So option 3 is correct option. In question number 45, a 1 ohm resistance is in series with an emitter which is balanced by 75 centimeter of potentiometer wire. A standard cell of 1.02 volt that means E is 1.02 volt is balanced by 50 centimeter. The emitter shows the reading of 1.5 ampere. We want to find the error in the emitter reading. We will find the actual value of current and then we will find the difference in actual value of current and emitter reading. Here the potential difference is directly proportional to L for potentiometer. So V1 by V2 is equals to L1 by L2. L1 is 75 centimeter and L2 is 50 centimeter. So V1 will be 75 divided by 50 into V2 that is 1.02. So V1 will be 1.53 volt. This is the potential difference across the resistance. So current through it I will be V by R that is 1.53 divided by resistance is 1 ohm that is 1.53 ampere. The actual current flowing through the resistance is 1.53 ampere and reading of the emitter is 1.5. So error is 1.53 minus 1.50 that is 0 0.03 ampere. So option 2 is correct option. Thank you.